we are going to discuss a ZTP VDU site deployment. Wind River Studio automates deployment and scaling to reduce operational expense. There are four components to Wind River Studio Operator. Our focus here is on Wind River Studio Cloud Platform, which provides a pre-verified, pre-integrated, and ready-to-deploy cloud-native platform based on Kubernetes for running containerized workloads. Cloud Platform is highly available, high-performance, scalable, and easy to use. It uses the best-in-class open source projects to deliver a modern container platform for use cases in the carrier and industrial verticals. Cloud Platform supports multiple configuration options, making it easy to deploy a platform in a wide spectrum of environments, ranging from the core of the network to the far edge. Wind River Cloud Platform Distributed Cloud Configuration supports an edge computing solution for providing central management and orchestration for a geographically distributed network of cloud platform systems. The distributed cloud system is designed to meet the needs of edge-based data centers in which worker resources are localized for maximum responsiveness, while management and control functions are centralized for efficient administration. The system supports a scalable number of cloud platform edge systems centrally managed and synchronized over L3 networks from a cloud platform central region. Each edge system is also highly scalable, from a single cloud simplex deployment or a, or a single server to a full standard configuration with up to 200 storage nodes. The architecture features a synchronized distributed control plane for reduced latency and an autonomous control plane such that all subcloud local servers are operational even during loss of northbound connectivity to the central region. Our ZTP demo will show four stages. Number one is the installation of a bare metal geo-distributed edge cloud from a single Linux distribution. Number two, downloading all container images from the central registry during bootstrap. Number three, deploy the edge cloud configuration. For example, CPU memory and network requirements on that edge cloud. And number four, this indicates that after the deployment has completed, it is ready for application deployment. The demonstration is an edge cloud or subcloud zero touch deployment from the central data center or a single access point. This will show how the demo looks from a CLI. The first stage is to set up the configuration from the central controller and then we'll see the CLI output at the edge sites as the OS is installing from bare metal. This is logging onto the central controller, and we have to pass the distributed cloud manager subcloud the install values so it knows how to create the ISO. It understands the networking of the far edge device and the bootstrap values so that the device gets properly configured with the correct images. And then finally, for the deployed configuration. This is like the CPU memory and networking configurations. It's as simple as that. Once that's completed, we'll look at the edge clouds themselves and at the edge cloud site. If we look at the console right after it is deployed from the central location from the previous step, we'll be able to see the installation process. In this case, it's all automated as we mentioned. The networking is all done based on the configuration files, fully automated and installed. Now, we're going to look at the same process from the perspective of the UI. This would be running in the regional data center, and it could be commanded from the national data center. Each regional data center is going to have up to 1,000 edge devices. What we're looking at right now is from the regional data center. There is already an edge device deployed in the system. When we run the commands from the previous CLI demo to deploy a second system, 
we will see a second system come into play. Approximately 10 seconds after the cloud is initially created, we can see that it's doing a pre-installation and then it moves to the installation phase. After about 25 minutes, it will move to the bootstrapping phase. Around 50 minutes into the process, the bootstrap completes and starts the deployment phase. You can see that it's offline now. The deployment is happening, but it's disabled, and all the sync statuses here in the center are unknown. They have come into sync, but there is still a degraded alarm status. Automatically, the system will pull the machine offline to get to a non-degraded state. So, it is in an OK state, and that's what we see. This has occurred automatically as part of the ZTP. Now that we have an Edge Cloud deployed, the next part of our demonstration is what happens when we are going over the data and realize we have to expand compute capacity. So, you could always add a second cloud at the other site, but from a management point of view, that isn't a great idea. It would be better to add more resources to the cloud that you have from a management and operational point of view. So, we're simply going to add the additional server onto the existing cloud. We start out by showing what we have initially deployed. And we have a single controller, meaning we have a single server at this site. There's no redundancy, and we can look at the processor information, the memory storage, the file system, the configuration reports that are on the machine, and how the interfaces are configured. We can look at the sensors that come from the Redfish interface. All of these sensors could be set up through the default management system and devices as well. All this information is available for each node. Now, in the upper window, we're back at the regional data center on the system controller. First thing, we're going to create a YAML file that describes the additional networking information that adding an additional host requires. Then we're going to run an Ansible playbook that's generic, other than it reads the network YAML file. And when that kicks off, we can see that it has red in the networking information for the additional nodes, but the rest is fairly generic. There's nothing specific, as it's simply converting that node from all-in-one to a controller in a duplex system. The window at the bottom is showing what has happened again at the Edge site. So after the configuration change, it has rebooted, locked itself, reconfigured, rebooted, and then come back online. This means we lost that server for approximately 20 minutes. Now, if we go back and look from the UI perspective, we'll be able to see that this conversion has happened. So that's our SX to HADX demo. Let's look at the host details. Now, we said that the conversion happened. We'll see we still have one node because we haven't defined the second node. We've just changed the personality of that node. Now we have the alarms because it knows that it should have a replication, that it should have a standby controller. But the standby controller is not available at this time. That's what these faults indicate. We go back to our central controller. We're going to pass in the deployment information for the second node. This is very similar to when we do a ZTP deploy of the first node. The main difference is we're not passing in the install information and the bootstrap information because it has already been taken care of. What we are passing in is simply the deployment information, all the networking configuration and such, for that second controller.
Let's go back to the UI at the central location and see what this looks like as the second node is defined and deployed. It is online. It's critical because the second node isn't available yet. It goes through the install and booting process just as the first node did, but this time it is booting directly from the controller at the edge site, so it's not pulling the data from the central location as it did on the first installation. Okay, now that the second controller is up, we can see that it's degraded because the file system needs to sync, which can take a few minutes between the two servers. After four minutes, it's still degraded. We'll speed this up a little bit. At seven minutes, we're still degraded. After 13 minutes, it becomes available. Now, we have a DX. We have two physical controllers and all the inventory information like the first controller is now available for the second controller. We can see the CPU, memory storage, and the sensors. Redfish is already communicating on this second server. It looks like all is well. Now we're fully up and running with no errors. We have doubled our compute capacity at the edge site. But what happens if you need more than two nodes when you start adding workers? We see currently a DX on the side, and now we're moving to add a plus worker. We're going to do a reconfig. And as we added the second controller, we are now sending the deployment information for the third node, or for the worker nodes. The main difference between when we converted from an SX all-in-one to a DX all-in-one is now we don't have any downtime. Once you're at a DX, you can add and remove as many workers as needed with zero downtime to the system itself. Let's see what this looks like from the side. Here we can see that it goes through and installs the packages, finishing the installation booting, it's out of sync. It's rebooting it to bring it into sync, testing and enabling. That all took about 20 minutes. Now we have a worker online. When we move from an all-in-one plus worker, we can add up to 50 workers in this configuration onto a DX. If the site needs to support more than 50 workers, we can convert the all-in-one controllers to be dedicated controllers. This is because at about 50 nodes, more CPU utilization is required at the control plane to support the additional workers. Once they're converted to two dedicated controllers, then we can add up to 200 workers at that site. We have discussed ZTP VDU site deployments and how Wind River Studio can automate deployment and scaling to reduce operational expense.